In the last lesson, we learned how to list, create, and delete buckets. Now it's time to put stuff in them. Let's take a look at how objects work. The files in S3 buckets are called objects. An object can be anything, an image, a video file, CSV, or a log file. Managing objects is a key component of many data pipelines. Objects and buckets in S3 work somewhat like files and folders on our desktop. Each bucket has a name. Objects' names are called keys. A bucket name is just a name. An object's key is the full path of the object from the bucket's root. A bucket's name is unique in all of S3. An object's key is unique in the bucket. A bucket contains many objects, but an object can only belong to one bucket. First, we create the client and assign it to the S3 variable. Now, we can perform operations on our objects and buckets. Let's upload an object into a bucket. We upload the file using the client's upload file method. The file name is the local file path. Bucket parameter takes the name of the bucket we are uploading to. Key is what we want to name the object in S3. We are not capturing the return from this method in a variable. The method doesn't return anything. If there is an error, it will throw an exception. Woohoo! Our file is now in S3. I've uploaded a few more objects for us to play with. Let's list them with Bato3. Call the client's list objects method, passing GID requests for bucket name. Optionally, we can limit the response to two objects with the max keys argument. If we omit it, S3 will return up to a thousand objects in our bucket if they exist. Another way to limit the response is to use the optional prefix argument. Passing it will limit the response to objects that start with the string we provide. The response dictionary contains the contents key. This key contains a list of objects and their info. Each object dictionary is returned with a key, a modified date, and the object size in bytes. If we want to know these things about a single object, we can use the client's head object method, passing the bucket name and object key. Notice that because we are only working with one object, there is no contents dictionary. The metadata is directly in the response dictionary. To download a file, we use the client's download file method. We pass the file name, or the local path we want the file to download to. Then we specify the bucket and key of the object we want to download. Sometimes an object has outlived its usefulness and needs to be deleted. Use the client's delete object method, passing the bucket name and object key to delete the object. In this lesson, we learn that buckets are like folders and objects are like files within them. We learn to create the client before we can do anything else. We learn how to upload files to a bucket, how to list objects in a bucket, how to head object or get object metadata, how to download a file from a bucket, and finally, how to delete an object. Let's help Sam continue working on her pipeline 